All right. You ready? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Were you making me laugh? <sighs> Welcome to Chili's. Today we're gonna learn how to make a water mixing station. Yeah, AKA I'm gonna show you how to do it. We're gonna be using 65 gallon vertical containers along with a oversized pump really. And the reason for that is because this location is or where the mixing station is going to go, it's basement. So it needs to go up probably two level. I don't know. It needs to go up two stories high. So we're gonna start, in this case, our containers came with a bulkhead. In a perfect world, I would like to have them without it so I can actually put them where I need them according to the height of the pump. But since we already have them there, all I did was make sure that they were nice and snug, which I already have done before you guys came along. The next step, we have one and a quarter inch bulkhead we need one inch. Uh, you also can use one inch bulkheads. In this case, this is what they came with. I'm gonna be using a one and a quarter uh, male threaded uh, adapter. I have put some plumber's tape on there. I do like this kind, it's the Monster. I know you can't see the middle, but this kind is good because once it's in there, it tends to sort of melt a little bit in there, kind of make it so it's gooey. So then you make a perfect seal, all right. I know it looks weird, but this is what you gotta do. Now in this case, you technically don't have to put it all the way in. It just has to be snug. Um, I like going in until all the way. Get giddy. But it looks like that's about it. Again, our next step is we're going down to one inch. So we have a one and a quarter to one inch pushing. And this is the fun part. This is where you get happy. Now you wanna make sure, oh, before I do that, this kind is two in one. You have your primer and your glue, and I just like using it, but whatever you prefer. We're gonna go, we're gonna put glue on both sides. Then perch firmly for about, uh, you know, 10, 15 seconds. There you go. And now we're gonna do the same with that other barrel. Wait, I got my glue. Oh, oh. That's what 42 looks like. Now we'll be doing the same thing on the other one. That should do. Have our bushing, we have our glue, both sides. Push all the way down, hold for 10, 15 seconds. And there we are. Now we're ready for one inch. That's what she said. <laughs> now in this case, we're filming the dog. We're going to be using this leveling foam because our pump sits about three eighths of an inch higher than our container. So we'll be putting this under our container just to make it level with the pump. And you can use anything you like. You can use plywood, you can use, uh, you know, anything you want. I don't know. I'm just, I just, just don't care anymore. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Now, I like putting the containers 
where I think they're gonna sit. Or this is a side by side. Salt water, RO water. I don't know, I just like putting the salt water on the left for whatever reason. You can do it however you want. So that's what it's gonna look like, kind of. Now, my favorite part of the job on the floor. In this situation, we're gonna be using uh, street elbows. I want to keep uh, the pipe as close as possible to the tank so there's no tripping. Uh, regardless, it's gonna stick out, but the less it sticks out, the better. Again, glue on both sides. Now you have a couple seconds when you stick the fitting in to make sure that it's the way you want it. So make sure you know where you want it before you put it in. In this case, we just want it facing straight to the pump. We're basically going to connect both tanks with one single pipe onto our intake of the pump. So we do that on the, on the other side as well. And yes, I'm eyeballing it, so. Uh, the good thing about PVC is that it has a little bit of give. So if you're off by say a 16th of an eighth of an inch is not a big deal. Most of the times it's gonna be flexible enough where you can make it work. Hallelujah. Now we're gonna be using one inch valves, ball valves. So the way you cut your pipe, the easy way, or at least that's what I think, is you measure the inside of where your pipe is gonna be. And usually on one inch fittings is actually one inch that goes into your pipe. So take that into consideration when you cut the length of your pipe. In this case, I want the, the wall valves pretty much the same distance and there is no exact measurement you need here. There's no picking a measurement. Like you just do according to your necessities. In this case, I'm gonna cut a pipe with the length of about four inches, but I have to add one inch for each fitting. So it would be six inches long in order for me to get my four inches in between. So don't forget that. Because if you do, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> so you mark your pipe, six inches, and none of that, you know, and doing crap. This is why we have tools now. Boom. Next one. Boom. Now, these ball valves, they do have a arrow that tells you where the flow is gonna go. Now, if you get it the other way, don't panic because these ball valves are a true union. So you can technically flip it any way you want. In this case, we want it going that way because that's where our pump is. Now what I'm gonna do is glue my pipe here first, both sides. Don't be stingy with the glue because if you are, sometimes you won't have enough and it's gonna dry too quick and you're not gonna have time to move it around and you're gonna be regretting that. And also make sure they're all the way in. So if you can do stuff like this, just push it all the way in and hold it there. Some of the other two part glues will tend to, uh, the vapors will tend to push the pipe out. This one, I find that it's not, doesn't do that very often. So there we are. This side's ready. Now we're gonna do the same thing here. And again, don't panic. If the valve is this way or that way, you just loosen it up and put it the way you want it. You thought I forgot about the dope, huh? No, yeah, no. Did not forget about the pipe. It's all the way in. And yeah, you might get dirty, but you know what? It wipes off and it's clear. So there's no mess. No fuzz. Same thing on the other side, ladies. Uh, in case you want your, I guess I don't see why would you, but if you do, they're com they come with a thread end of on uh, each end. So you can switch them and have threads instead of glue. I don't find it necessary, but if you do, you got that option. Now, 
I'm gonna explain something. A lot of people don't know. This little tool here that comes with it, sometimes you'll find that your valve is a little hard to turn or you want it to close, but not quite close all the way or whatever your situation is. There's this little, I don't know what to call it. There's a crevice here for this tool. And what you do is you either tighten or loosen accordingly to how tight you want your lever or how loose or where you want it to stop. So that's what this is for. See? Loosey goosey. A little too much. And there we go. Uh -huh. So now you know. Again, the flow, flow goes the opposite way now. So we want on this side. Again, all the way, all the way, all the way. Matilda. Yeah, I got three kids, so don't be surprised. Same thing. Damn, it's looking good. As you can see, it doesn't take that long for this glue to set right there. Now, I use a T on this area. This pump came with a uh, half of a union. So I'm just gonna use another one and take the part that the union needs, which is the threaded side to complete this. Now here's the thing, you can put your pump anywhere you want and this is the time to decide. It can be there, it can be back there. It just depends on how you wanna do it. In this case, like I said, I wanna keep everything tight. So I'm gonna put it as close as I can. Now, uh, other people usually or sometimes put a valve right here in order to change the pump in case something happens. You got water here, water here, you close your two valves and you're set to go. You take your pump out, put the new one in and you're done. In this case, I won't. It has a union here. All, all you have to do is close these two and you have a little water, but it's minimal. And you're gonna get wet no matter what, so. Now for this tea, I will probably, in the future, if I ever need to cut it, I'm probably gonna give it three inches in between, just because that will allow for any other fitting. As if you cut it in the middle, it'll allow you to put any other fitting that you need to. So three inches plus one and one, that'll be five inches. You know, your average. <laughs> There you are. I will do the T first. See that? All the way. And then since we have access to this other part, I'll just undo it. And there we are. Oh yeah, make sure you have your uh, seal in there. If this is missing, you're gonna have a leak. And they do tend to come off once in a while, so just make sure it's there. And again, this is, you can move it however you want, so you don't have to be straight. Now we obviously want the sides even, so we'll cut two pipes in size. You can probably screw up a little bit here, and if you do, it's fine because you got space in between the pump and the tank, so you'll be able to move them back and forth about an inch or less, so you have a little bit of room to mess up. We're gonna make this two and three quarters, which brings us to four and three quarters with the extra for the fittings. Uh, make sure that if you don't cut it straight, always measure from the highest point because that's, a, that's what's gonna touch your fitting on the inside first. Again, you can take this off, be the easiest way to do it. Now, in this case, I'm gonna do this because I can put this threaded side on the other side before I glue it. Now, if you forget to put this in, <laughs> you're gonna be screwed because you're just gonna have to cut it and do it again. So don't forget, because you're gonna piss me off. What is that? Again, both sides. Push it in all the way. There you are. And let's do the same thing on the other side. Now, if you don't wanna take it off, Make sure it's flat like that, and you don't have to take it off. Both sides, push it in. And again, 
this glue doesn't tend to push out, so it's pretty nice. Make sure it's all the way in. See, what was that? Like two, three seconds that you have to uh, adjust anything. So just gotta be quick and be sure of yourself. Now. So it's good. That size good. Oops. Nice and tight. That's what he said. Giggity. And there you go. That's uh, the first part of your build. Now let's begin with the second part. Same thing on the top part of the pump. It came to us with a one inch uh, union on there. So we're going to take another new one. We'll pull the thread side, which is what it needs. Right there. Now here's where you have to decide where, what height do you want for your output to go? Uh, if you're gonna fill buckets, if you're gonna put a hose on there, if you put a hose on there, it doesn't really matter, but you want it to be comfortable so you don't have to bend over to open it. So I would say, I think 16 inches from the floor, it's about right. Well, for a short guy like me, it is anyways, uh, but that's up to you. So here's what I do. The length of the PVC right now, it doesn't matter because we're going to be cutting it on the spot. So we'll go ahead and glue this side. Hold it there. I can, I did feel a little bit of a push on this one. That's why I'm holding it a little longer. So it gets on there. And I know you guys see this excess glue and stuff, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's best if you have an excess glue that you can wipe off then if you don't have enough because it sucks when you glue it and you have a little trickle leak out of there and it's already glued now there is a way to get it off you have to heat the pvc and basically pull it out but it's not easy and it's something that you don't have to do if you do it right the first time here we go to be honest i would have flipped this it came to me like this but it's it, it's not that important but i just like this side being on top like this this one's the opposite, but that's fine. So there's that. Time to get off of our knees. Oh boy. Now here we're gonna use a T for output. So from the floor up, oh, I was way off. That's too low. We're probably gonna do two feet, 24 inches right there. There we go. Now we have our T. Again, both sides. Now make sure you pay attention to the direction of the T because you don't want to mess that up because I've done it before. It sucks. In this case, again, you don't have to worry about being straight or not because it's got that union. You can move it however you want. That's about right, right there. Now let's go ahead and do our output. I use, uh, again, another one inch ball ball direction of the flow out. This one, I don't think you're ever going to need to cut it just because if this goes bad, you can buy another one, use the same sides, put, just change the middle part. So I'm gonna give it about one inch in between, plus two, that'll be three inches. I feel like this video is gonna be longer than what I was thinking. Again, I'm just gonna take this out, sides. Should we get all the way in there? Then to the T, both sides. Make sure it's in there. Shabam. Like my little kid says, boom chakalaka. Now in this case, I think our customer is gonna use a Python. So I think we're gonna use a 45 elbow with a three quarter inch female threaded on the other side. And this area here is for the Python fitting. So that will lock right in there. Now you the other side to the valve. Um, if you want it shorter or if you want it in an angle down, you can use a 90. If you want to use quick connect, you can use quick connect. I mean, you can do anything really. There's everything for anything out there. Now again, I probably want it as close as I can. So I'll probably just do a two inch so they're right next to each other. 
Sometimes you can cut it maybe an uh, eighth of an inch shorter, so you make sure they touch, but both sides. Now let's glue our fitting in one side of the elbow. In there, push it down. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. It smells really good down here. And again, this is fun for two reasons. Uh, it's like Legos for big kids. And you get a little tipsy without paying for it. Well, you do pay for it, but you know what I mean? And there you are, that section is done. Now this is the interesting part of the build. This for me is more like the, like I sort of eyeball most of it, measure here and there, take it as you will. <laughs> Again, I'm just gonna glue the pipe there because we're gonna end up cutting it anyways to the length that we want. And there's that. And we are probably gonna do this the smart way. So I usually don't have to, but in this case, I'm gonna put another union here just in case we need to swing the pipe up here a little bit to make the hole and we can do that. Otherwise we'll be stuck with a crooked pipe. So from the fitting, I'll probably give it three inches. Let's do two and a half. So you measure two and a half. Kinda right there. Have your cutter. There's that. There you go. You can see inside the fitting, it's all the way in. Put our other part there. Putting another pipe. I'll be cutting this, so no worries. Now we'll have an elbow here. We'll have a, a 90 elbow. Hopefully leaves enough room for the other valve. So let's check that. And if you don't have enough room, if you're short by an inch or two, maybe, well, actually an inch, you can always use a, a straight elbow. Our direction is like this. So we pretty much are gonna have to use a straight elbow. And I'll show you how to do that as soon as I get it. Dun -dun -dun. So direction that way. Take this off. Our street elbow goes right in there, like that. And that'll leave us room to put our valve there. Oh yeah. So let's do this. Again, don't forget, keep this there. Don't take it out because if you forget, you're screwed. Done it more than once, can tell you that much. All the way in, there's that. And if, it, if you see this little bit there, don't, freak out these actually tend to be a little longer you can see it's all the way in just how it is now this is where your eyeballs are going to become more of a measuring tape because for this part or at least within my case you sort of want to put it where you want it which is about right there so it leaves a flat spot for our uh uniseal on this side now you want to mark the bottom of where your fitting is and then measure one inch from here up which is what it's going to go into your fitting if i can find my measuring tape yeah, that'll work. Um, ready, Freddy? So we were saying one inch from your lineup, which is what goes into the elbow approximately right there. And then you cut your finger off. No, don't do that. Now take this off to glue the elbow and don't worry about which direction it's going to be because that's why we put this union here so we can move it however we want. The important thing right now, it's for you to make sure that it's in there and glued properly. Because if any of this leaks, you are gonna be pissed. There we go. See this? See that? Uh, 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 it's awesome. Now, put the valve back in and decide where you want it to come in. In this case, I just let it do its natural pipe thing like they do in the wild, you know. <laughs> it's about right there. Mark the center of your hole and mark the center of your hole approximately on the other side. This is my method, don't judge me. And then take it off. Kind of a straight edge. You can use a level for a better. That's your center. That's where the center of your hole is gonna go. Now to do that, you wanna remove 
this so you have space to work with. And for one inch uniseal, you're gonna use a 44 millimeter hole saw. And here we go. And you gotta be careful because they're, you gotta go slow. Cause they tend to go in quick and they, they grab onto and then you have a sore wrist. We're in. If you have any sort of uh, leftovers, I like to trim them off. And at the end, uh, you can always take everything apart and flip over your tanks and get all the stuff out that you want to get out. Wash them if they're dirty. Anyways, that look good. One inch Uniseal just pushes right in, I think. There it is. Now for this part, sounds dirty, but you're gonna need some sort of a lube. Maybe uh, olive oil or uh, canola oil or anything that you can put in your Uniseal and you can get your pipe in a lot easier. Giggity. This is also where you gotta decide how much pipe you want inside your container. I usually like to have, say, one, one to two inches because we will be putting an elbow inside to direct the water down to keep the salt from settling and it'll mix a lot faster and you'll see what i mean so remember one inch goes in your feeding and probably another inch inside for the elbow so that means leaves us with about three to four inches so let's do four inches just to be safe Now, if I were you, say you do a new piece of pipe, the side of the new pipe, this side, the side that they cut, it's always nice and straight. I would use this side to go into the uni and through the uniseal because the side that you cut, since it's a blade just pushing through, tends to open the plastic or the PVC and you can see all those ridges. Makes it a lot harder to slide in. So this side to the, to the valve and this side to the uniseal. Now, if you don't have this side, then you wanna use a knife and trim the edges a little bit so they're smooth. So we're gonna put our pipe on this first. Make sure it's in there. All right. Now we'll remove this again just for ease of getting it in there. Again, you can use some sort of a lubricant, like maybe even a silicone lube or something. In this case, I'm just gonna attempt it dry, side to side. Damn. <sighs> Got it. See that? That's how you do it. Put it in there. Damn, look at that. Can you see it? Now, for the inside, I like to put, this will go in there like this. I like to put a, a piece of pipe going down to direct the flow down and keep the salt from settling. Uh, if you use, oh, I, I recommend people to always uh, use a bigger pump than what you think you need. Why? Because you can cramp, crank that son of a gun up when you're mixing, so it mixes fast. And, Crank it down when you need to fill up your tank. It helps in a pinch. Like if you gotta mix fast, then that's the way to go. And you can do the, the length that you want. Some people put it almost all the way, leave it like three inches from the bottom of the tank or whatever. Doesn't matter, just get it down there. So in this case, I think I'm going with probably six inches plus one for the fitting. I just don't think it needs to go all the way down, especially with this pump this size. We oversize this pump big time because of the two stories that has to go up into the tank and it's a lot of power. Now this one is not a controllable pump either. So if you have the option, use a controllable pump. And if you have to run up and down, it's a good thing to buy like a Bluetooth uh, outlet thing connector. I don't know what they're called. So you can turn your pump off uh, right away from your phone instead of running all the way downstairs to try to do that. Just a little tip. And 
if you don't want to glue this part, you don't have to, but I like to because sometimes the pump just pushes it out over time. And trying to fish that out of there, depending on the size of the tank, it's kind of a pain in the butt. And again, don't worry if you don't get it straight down because outside here you have this where you can undo it and move it however you want. And your main water changing station is pretty much done except for the floats and all that bang. So would you like me to show you how to put the floats in? Okay. Good. Jeez. All right, switch into, where is it? There it is. What are these called again? Step drill bit. Step drill bit, yep, you're right, step drill bit. Float valve. You can use either the non-adjustable float valve or you can use the adjustable one. This is an adjustable one, you can see. You can adjust your float however you want. I like to use the adjustable ones just because I don't totally like this. Uh, I don't know. I just think that if they fail, it's or it's a lot easier for them to fail, but maybe that's just me. I like using this adjustable one, just a slight angle down. Take this out. Make sure you don't lose those two little pieces that go inside because you will need them for our, your RO tubing. There it is. Take the nut off. Location, that is up to you. You can go on back, on the side, in front, and whichever place you want. I like to put them on front because they're accessible. You have access to this, so you don't have to mess around if you need to switch it. And I usually try to do it about right here, about that angle. I do that. A little more. And there we are, nice and easy. Put it inside, put it through. Put your nut on. Make sure your float is facing the right way. Hold it inside, make it nice and tight, nice and snug. You can do it with your hand or you can use uh, pliers or whatever else you want, but it's plastic nut, so I wouldn't do it too hard so you don't break it. Now, a road tubing. If you're gonna be filling both at the same time, I recommend using a T. I recommend using something like this that cuts the tubing straight so it doesn't leak. I like the blue for the outlet, for the output of the RO unit. Now, direction of these, first this one, just like that. Second, actually second is this one. And that's the direction right there. Bigger side, thicker side to the front. And lastly, there you go. Just like that. Push it all the way in and tighten that son of a gun. And again, it doesn't have to be too tight, just enough. There we go. Ball valves, quarter inch. So you have the ability of closing the RO water into it. I like putting them close to the float because it's high enough to where I can do it without bending over. So again, nice and straight. I don't think these have a flow direction. They're just, and make sure that it's all the way in. Other side, all the way in. And this is going to go to a T, which I will show you right now. So again, we cut it nice and straight. We put our T. If you're using scissors or something, because you don't have this tool, make sure the scissors are sharp so they don't actually bend the tubing like it did a little bit here. A little squeeze to straighten it up. Now this side is gonna go to your RO unit, of course. And this side will go into your other tank. And we're gonna repeat the process on the other side. This is getting very instructional. And uh, when you know what you're doing, this will take you to make one of these, no matter the size of the containers, probably around 45 minutes. If you don't know, two or three hours, now you know. <laughs> and if you want it nice and pretty, come and get all the parts to new wave. Because we have all the colors. Other side. Put right there. Put 
sure it fits. There it is. Again, make sure it's straight inside, facing the right way. Hopefully, it's not crooked. It looks straight. Make sure this is tight. Now this, I'm gonna do backwards, but it's basically the same thing. If you're kind of picky about it, you can always measure your length and cut two of each because that's what you're gonna be using. If you're not, then you just eyeball it. So it looks kind of even. Again, all the way in. Tighten this up. That goes to your arrow unit. And we're done. Right there, there it is. One of a kind, ready to go. Mix it, pump it, pump it real good. And then after that, you just gotta clean all the mess but we got people for that. All right, so since we're doing this, I'm gonna show you how to work the station. Salt, RO. Now, you're gonna do a water change, you wanna mix your water. Open this valve, close, close, open. Now that means that the pump is taking water from here, traveling up, putting it back right in. So it's circulating your water and mixing it. When you're done and you wanna pump water out, this is your Output goes to your tank, open this, and you're gonna have water flow in. If you need more pressure, you close this one. That'll give you full pressure of the pump out to your tank. Open that all the way, and you're in business. Obviously, you do your water change, you finish, you turn off your pump, close this, open this, and usually what we do, we move water from our RO unit into the other side so we don't have to mess with this valve. This is useful for the first time, the second time and so on, you don't really need it open anymore because you can move the water and you're done. So you leave, you close this one, leave this one open, open your RO one and it will suck water from your RO side to your south side. Move all your water and you're done, turn off your pump, close your valve and if you just want it circulating you can open this one it'll circulate otherwise you turn everything off and close all your valves and that's that if you want to pump out only RO water for your auto top off close everything open this one and all you have to do is turn your pump on if you need to if not there it is taking RO water following the right into your uh, ATO when you're done again turn your pump off close everything up done and so we're done this is how you build a water changing station from zero to the cadillac of water changing stations if you have any comments any questions anything that you would do different leave a comment give us a call or not yeah i'm done just done <laughs>